Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a new copy of Sunny Day Sardines. It's a 52 card game in a tin can by 25th Century Games. So like always, let's get right into this. So like most games, you wanna get the most points, just like this one. When the last order card is flipped over, the game ends and whoever has the most points, counting up all of their completed order cards, wins the game. Each player starts with two random sardine cards and a market is formed with five sardine cards. The remaining forms the sardine deck. Order cards are then shuffled and four are placed face up. Players need to collect sardine cards and match available order cards. Players take turns and on a turn a player can either gather sardines by taking two fish from the fish available in the market. This would be either a card with two fish on it or two cards with one fish on each. Either way, you gain two fish. This decision might not seem important now, but when playing the game, you will see why this will affect you. Actually, let me just tell you now, you have a hand limit of six cards, so many times you will get stuck with fish that either aren't on any order card, or you won't have enough of that fish on the order cards. Many times you will hit that card limit problem, so the two fish on one card sounds like a good problem solver. But again, sometimes this will get you stuck as you don't ever get change for paying for fish from an order. So you overpay, costing you a fish. This wouldn't happen if you used the single fish cards. So pretty much they both are good for their own reasons, but depending on what orders are available, you will need to make the decision to either take one card with two fish on it or two cards with one fish on them. The second option a player can take is to complete an order. A player does this by paying sardines listed on that order card. The sardines are placed in a discard pile and that player takes the matching order card, placing it face down in front of them. Order cards award different points from one to six. The hardest orders that award the most points list two pairs of two colored sardines. There are four total fish that you will need in this order of the specific colors. There is actually only one five point order card which will cost you four of the same colored sardines of any of the four colors. The four point cards require three of the shown colored sardines. The three points require either a group of three of all the same color or three sardines all of a different color. That's what this chopped up sardine looking thing means. Two point cards require a pair of the listed color and a one point card can be either two sardines of different colors or two sardines of any of the four colors. If you do the math, the higher point cards have a better payout. Turn in four fish for six points, while three point cards give you three points for three fish, down to the one point cards which are flexible, but two fish for one point. Players continue playing. If the sardine deck runs out, you will take the discarded cards, shuffle them, and make a new sardine deck. But when the last order card is flipped out, the game ends and points are added up. Now that's exactly what this game is. It's simple, it's quick, and it's deceptively layered with some choices that will largely affect how you do in this game, if you do well or if you do really bad. What I mean is that if you get caught in a position where you can't manage your sardines and gain order cards, you'll probably lose the game. Players want to have cards in their hands that can be flexible. This would be sardines that the player can use for multiple orders, not just one. Because if another player takes the order card before you do, then you're stuck. Also, if you find yourself overpaying with fish, the other player might play the game more efficiently and beat you. Now, I'll tell you, when players actually know how this game is played, they will all be aiming for those six point cards or whatever the largest point card is that is out and available. Also, when players know the game, they will play in a way where they will wait till a bit to see what the new orders are that come out and try to get those larger point cards if they can. But the management of your hand is deceptively important. Of course, my kids really like this game, probably because the rules are so simple and they understand what they're trying to do in the game. And for me, it's not a game that challenges my brain much, but it's a fast game that makes me make decisions still that affect the game. And I don't feel over invested in the game, being that it's short. And for all these reasons, we have played this game a lot over and over again. 
Anyways, my last words of advice from my own experience is try to stay away from the split color two fish cards. They are only good in certain situations, but I have found that many times they get stuck in my hand or I have to use them to overpay with other fish listed on it. I try to stay away from these cards, but I at times will pick them up when I am more confident that I can use them in an order before another player does. But besides that, it's all about game time decisions, getting the higher point order cards and managing your sardines to not get stuck with cards in your hand without having cards to gain an order card that is out. So select your sardines carefully with your family and friends in Sunny Day Sardines by 25th Century Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.